Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you this morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Great is our God, for he is greatly to be praised. This morning, I... um. I just bless God for allowing us to see a day that we have never seen before. Truly, the Lord has been great towards us. And any time that we are able to wake up and to have our activities of our limbs and to be in our right mind, we ought to tell the Lord thank you. So I tell the Lord thank you this morning. Um, I would like to call your attention to a very, very familiar passage of Scripture and I am going to be reading this out of the New Living Translation version, which is the NLT. Um, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 10 down to verse 18. Usually I try to read just a couple of verses, but I want you to um, get an understanding of the uh, what the Lord is saying this morning. So just go with me to the book of Exodus chapter number 14. And we're going to read verses 10 down through 18. And the word of the Lord says this, As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panic when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. So they cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness, my God. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. So the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. So the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Verse number 15 says this. So then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Mm. Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and his charioteers. The last verse, verse number 18. So when my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord, my God. The words that I would like to use this morning is get moving. But a thought that I want you to ponder upon is, is perhaps you can ask yourself this question or you can just make a statement at my breaking point, at my breaking point. Um, life has a way, good morning, of causing us to stop, reflect, and to remember that our hope is in God the Father. So one day last week, I found myself running behind. I was rushing and I was trying my hardest to get to work. And as I was driving, something hit me. Although I was in a hurry, nobody else was. <laughs> So to them, there was no need to move any faster or to be in a hurry. So in life, we find ourselves on a two-lane highway. You want to pass, but there are double lines. You want to pass and move forward, but there are cars coming, and you don't want to risk having a head-on collision. So now you find yourself having to slow down and to do what? 
to keep your distance and pay attention until you are able to move forward. My God. And for all of us, this is a challenging task when we have to wait because we find ourselves at what? A breaking point. And prayerfully, <laughs> you know, you don't have road rage when you are frustrated. But like I said before, the person in front of you isn't running behind. They have no idea that you're in a hurry to get to work or to that appointment. So to them, your urgency isn't relevant. It is inevitable that there will be times in our lives when things don't work out as planned. My God. Times when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place with no place to turn. And when this happens, we tend to limit ourselves and limit God because we're too focused on what we perceive and what we see. My God. But this is when you need to grab hold of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. He says, so we don't look at the troubles that we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. My God. For the things we see now will soon be gone but the things we cannot see will last forever my god so here we find in the text in the book of exodus it simply means a journey out a departure um in the book of exodus god demonstrates time and time again his power to his people my god he freed them from opposition and from themselves and too often god proves himself to us but we get stuck in the now we get stuck at what we see and for some reason we forget all about hebrews 13 and 8 where jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and if god did it before guess what he would do it again he said in malachi 3 and 6 for i the lord do not change therefore you O children of jacob are not consumed so according to the text now, the Israelites, they fell into a panic mode when they thought they were trapped or stuck with Pharaoh before them and the Red Sea behind them. And the same with many today, when our backs are against the wall, we start to complain, we, be we get in a panic mode, and we become complacent, my God. And some will even begin to say, what's the use? Or we are telling ourselves, oh, I'm okay, when we really are not. And we'll stay right there until we reach that breaking point. Why? Because in our minds, you don't think that you can move forward. You think that no, there's no hope for change. Because it's so easy now to convey in our mind, in our thinking, that I just can't do it. And as long as you believe that, guess what? You're right, you can't. <laughs> you will continue to stay in that place of not moving forward. Negative thinking, stinking thinking keeps us in a place of complacency, my God. And if you're not careful, you will find yourself in a panic. You'll find yourself stuck behind slow vehicles and getting nowhere. Israel was panicking, but when you look at the beginning of the chapter... God had already told Moses to speak to his children and tell them to turn to the camp before, before Piharath, a, a place that is known to be unknown, a place in the wilderness between Migdal and the sea. And sometimes God will purposely lead us into situations that look like dead ends to test our faith and to show his power. So that we will realize that, guess what? He is in control. And sometimes in our lives, we will find that um, uh, we have to do things that are uncomfortable. Times when we have to um, um, let go of ourselves and trust God. Times when it seems like we're in a situation that seems impossible. But just like Abraham, we must have the men in mentality that wherever God leads me, guess what? I'm going to follow. Because guess what? God is more concerned about your obedience. Because when you are obedient, then he can take full responsibility for our needs. 
So now we find that God told Moses that this was for his glory. That he will begin to harden Pharaoh's heart and cause them to pursue the children of Israel. An Egyptian that you that will know that he is God, that they will know that he is the great I am. And so the Bible says now that Pharaoh and his army that set out to pursue Israel. And so when they drew near to the children of Israel, when they begin to look and they begin to see, guess what? They became afraid. They begin to cry out to Lord to the Lord. They remember how they were in bondage. They remember that slave mentality they were at the breaking point and they begin to cry out they said god i need you is there anybody that's listening under the sound of my voice that has found yourself in situation when all you can do is begin to cry out to god and say god i need you now mm. God, I don't know what to do. God, can you help me? God, if you will do this for me, I promise I go to church on Sunday. I promise you, God, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Am I talking to anybody on the line this morning that's ever been there? Because this is what we tend to do. When we find ourselves stuck between a rock and a hard place and no place to turn and no place to go to, nobody to call on, Guess what we do? We begin to call on the name of the Lord. And this is what, my God, the children of Israel begin to do. They got, they found themselves in a breaking point. So what is a breaking point? I'm glad you asked because I took the liberty to look this word up myself because sometimes what we think words, what the meaning of the word is, is not the meaning. So Miriam Webster says this, that a breaking point is, is a point at which a person gives way under stress. Mm. It's that point at which a situation becomes critical. Mm. It's that part when the doctor says, you know what? You got fourth stage. You're in the fourth stage of cancer. It's that part when you go in to work a job that you've been working on for years and they say, we no longer need you. It's that part when you done did all you know how to do and that child is still wavering. That child is still doing drugs. That child is still out on the street. That's your breaking point. My God. And here we find that Israel was there. They were at their breaking point. They said to Moses, because you know what? Were there no graves in Egypt? <laughs> you just took us out here to die? Why did you bring us here? We told you to leave us be. Let us be. We were fine. So many of us, we're so fine and so comfortable of being abused. We're fine of being bound because this is a place of comfort. And God has said, I want to free you. I want you to be free. But we're still stuck. And then when he deliver us, we rather go back to the past instead of moving forward. My God. And then they begin to say, you know what, Moses? It was better for us to serve the Egyptians than to sit out here and die. They were too busy looking at what they see in front of them and what behind them. Instead of realizing that God had already brought them out. If he did it before, guess what? He's going to do it again. I know the light bill is due. Guess what? If he paid it before, he's going to pay it again. My God. So they were at their breaking point. They were right where, where God needed them to be. Because when we reach our breaking points, then we realize that God is what? The all-sufficient one. Our breaking points has a way of showing us that we need to be healed. They reveal our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities and they provide a way for us to move forward. And when we begin to turn to God, when we give it to him, guess what? That's when the healing begins. That's when we are delivered. That's when we can move forward. And you may ask the question, now how can I move forward? I'm glad you asked because Moses told us in this word today. He said, he looked at the children of Israel. And when they were at their breaking point, number one, he told them not to be afraid. You can't be afraid in this season. 
I know we are in a in uh what we call it inflation, economic inflation. We we got all kinds of things that's happening around us, tornadoes over here, we got earthquakes over there, we got people that are dying um uh, from this virus, everything is happening. It's so easy, oh God, to get caught up into fear. But I love what the word of the Lord tells us. Isaiah 41 and 10 says this. He says, fear not, for I am with you. God is with you. He Then he turns around and tells us, don't be dismayed. Because what? I am your God. I will give you the strength. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, number one, you can't be afraid. Number two, you have to stand still. <laughs> oh, God, you got to stand still. In the Hebrew, that means you got to stop all activity. Cease all striving. And if you begin to dig a little deeper, it means wafa, which means to be weak, to let go, to release. And essentially what it means is to surrender. And many of us got a problem when it comes to surrendering. Hmm. Yeah, I know you think that you got it going on and you can do it on your own. But you got to give it to God. Because truthfully, the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. You got to let go. God said, your strength is made perfect in your weakness. When we begin to surrender our lives, our will, our desires to God, he can reveal himself to us. But the problem is many of us have a hard time in surrendering. And all he's saying is just give it to me. You know that passage of scripture that said, cast all my cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Not those things that you think that you're big and bad enough to take care of by yourself. That's what it means when he says, stand still, surrender. And I want to pose a question. I want you to pound upon this. Can you trust God enough to follow when he says to let go and to do what I tell you to do? Because in order to do this, you got to know that God is your refuge. He is your strength. He is your present help in a time of trouble. He just needs for you to stand still. And the last part that Moses gave, he said, God will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Oh, that's a tough one too. My God, hold my peace. What you mean hold my peace? Well, all this stuff is going on. <laughs> Understand when you truly surrender, my God. It may seem like you're going to be embarrassed. It may seem um, you're afraid to let go of your pride and your pain. But the fact of the matter is when you begin to surrender and when you begin to hold your peace in the midst of chaos, when you do your part, guess what? God will do his and he will fight your battle. You just need to hold your peace. Listen, we're living in a season and a time that none of us have ever experienced in our lifetime. There's recalls on food and drinks and shortages, um, not only in the necessities, but also in the workforce. I mean, stock markets are falling and crashing and oil prices are rising. And many places have closed their doors and even um, churches have closed their doors never to open them again. But I challenge you this morning to fear not because fear and anxiety has hit the land. But we as believers have to hold our peace. We got to trust God in the midst of uncertainties because truthfully, he is the answer. He is the way. So as we look at verse 15 now, um, it tells us that God began to rebuke Moses and he asked him, why do you cry to me? Tell the people to move forward. He told him to lift up his rod and to stretch out his hand over the sea so they can walk on dry land. 
the what he already what what God was telling him, why are you crying to me? My job for you was to lead the people. Now is not the time to crumble under pressure. Moses is praying to God too, just like the children of Israel. And God had to remind him that, guess what? I got this. These are my people. I've given you a job to do. And this is why many leaders are falling apart. Many are falling by the wayside because they forget it's not your people. They belong to God. They don't belong to you. And when you do what God tells you to do, guess what? He'll do the rest. Too many times we forget that he is the creator. He is the one that's in charge. And then we find ourselves broken. Why? Because we try to do it ourselves. When God is saying it's not your responsibility. And then I love what, it, what God says in verse 18. He said, let the Egyptians know that I, he said, I am the Lord. And then through all of this, you might be thinking, okay, God, why is this happening? Um, you know, I, I, I serve you faithfully. And God is saying, it's not about you. This is so that I will get the glory. So that the people would know that I am God. Sometimes we have to reach that breaking point. Sometimes we have to get in that place where we have our backs against the wall. So that God can get our attention to remind us. That he is God. He is Lord of all. And then <laughs> we can move forward when we, when we allow him to do it. So I say to you this morning, pay attention. God is shifting in his hour. God is doing things that um, things are happening. We have to pay attention. We are living, my God, in times uh, um in the end times, we're living in the last days and we got to pay attention. Now is not the time to become shipwrecked. Oh yeah, you're going to have your breaking point, but don't die in your winter. Mm. I said this yesterday, don't die in your winter because spring is right around the corner. Season change. But I'm so glad this morning to tell you that God stays the same. If he delivered before, guess what? He will deliver again. Things may not go as planned. Things may not go back to the way that you want them to go. But guess what? We have a God that sit high, that look low, that holds everything in the palm of his hand. We serve a God that cannot and will not fail. We serve a God that can do the impossible. When man says no, God says yes. We serve a God that says yes and amen. We serve a God that loves his children. My God. <coughs> My God. So I say to you this morning. When you get in your breaking point, remember what the psalmist declared in Psalm 40. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned me and he heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the pit of despair and out of the mud and out of the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, my God, and he steadied me as I walked along. And then he goes on to say, he has given me a new song, a hymn of praise, my God. Many will see what he has done and many will be amazed. And guess what? They will put their trust in the Lord. So while you're at your breaking point, remember that God never fails. He wants us to get moving, to keep moving, and know that the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord. We bless you and we honor you. God, we thank you for this word this morning. Because many of us have found ourselves at a breaking point. Many of us, Father God, have found ourselves between a rock and a hard place and no place to go. But God, that is the point that you want us to be in so that we will know that you are God. That we will know that you are our solution. That we will know that you got us. God, I pray, Lord, that every listener that is listening under the sound of my voice will grab hold of your word. That they will grab hold 
hold of you and not let go. God, and they will realize that even in the midst of chaos that you are there. And they will realize that you said that you'll never leave us and that you will never forsake us. Yes, there are going to be some days when the tears may fall. Yes, there are going to be some days when we feel like giving up. But God, I thank you that great is thy faithfulness, oh God. God, I thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy that continue to keep us. And God, I thank you this morning, Father God, that even we don't understand, oh God, that we can't show God, track you, God. God, that we can trust you. God, I pray, Lord, that every listener will begin to trust you even when they don't understand what is happening. God, if they don't see their way out, that they will look up. And God, I thank you now for what you're doing. And God, I bless your name. And God, now, Father, I ask, Lord, that you bless each and every listener, God. God, we come against the spirit of retaliation. We come against the spirit of backlash. We come against the enemy on every hand. And God, I pray, Lord, that your people will move forward. God, that they will move forward. They will look past what they see and know in whom they believe. Now, God, we seal this prayer. We seal this word in the name of Jesus. And we say that it is so and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Listen, tonight at 8.30 by way of conference call, you can go to my page, Kimberly Perkins Furby, or you can go to Kimberly Furby, or you can um, go to this page where you will find the call-in number um, um, so that we're coming together at 8.30 tonight to pray. Listen, God has been answering the prayers. And the Bible declares that the prayers of the righteous avails much. We serve a God that loves his children. We serve a God that loves his sons and loves his daughters. He said to ask, and guess what? We shall receive. He even told us to seek. My God, and we will find knock and the door will be open. And then there's a passage of scripture that said, whatever we ask, if we believe, guess what? We shall receive it. And so I stand on the promises of God. I'm one of those, you know what? I, I trust God with every fiber of my being. If God said it, guess what? He's going to do it. So I, I invite you to join us tonight by way of conference call. Um, at 8.30 p.m. as we come together, touching and agreeing and praying. And um, just perhaps if you you have something already on your agenda and you can't attend tonight, I invite you to come back here on Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. And let's see what the Lord has to say to us on next week by way of Word Empowerment Wednesday. Um, we will be... Um, Convening back together on the first of the year, I believe it's January the third, the first Monday in January. We will be coming back together for our Bible study, and I invite you to come and join us for um, our Bible study. We just completed our book study, and we're taking this time now to um, enjoy our families and to be with our families. And I pray that that is what you all are doing, um, that you are enjoying your families during this holiday season. Um, 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 so I say to you this morning, um, something great is going to happen for you. And I say this every week because the reason why I know this is that we serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. And I say to you, share this video, um, share the conference call number with others so that they may join us. Um, let's come together. It's not about me. It's all about God. And so you never know. Somebody just might need to know that somebody might be at their breaking point this morning and they don't understand. And they might be at the blink of giving up. But we decree and declare this morning that they shall not falter. They shall not die in the winter because spring is right around the corner. So I say God bless you and have a blessed and wonderful day.